So alright guys, last night I got everything fixed up. This is now working properly. And I also found the leak in the power steering line, so I've got that filled up now. So today, I'm going to go ahead and start it up and test the fans. Sorry, that hasn't gone well. It was running fine, then it just cut off. And now it doesn't really want to restart. So, I'm thinking that perhaps the injectors are clogged again, even after cleaning everything out. So what I'll do is pull the fuel rail and inspect everything, and hopefully when I get it back together, everything will work right. So all right, unfortunately, there may have still been dirty fuel down in the lines here that have clogged the injectors again. So I'm gonna take everything apart, clean it out one more time, and hopefully we can get this resolved. So all right, the injectors seem to be working fine. It does seem to be running a little lean though. I'm not sure if there's a vacuum leak or if I need to replace the fuel pressure regulator, but I'll keep digging. So all right guys, we've been playing around with this car a little bit more. I wanted to see if it wasn't perhaps the airflow meter and you can see that there's been water sitting down in here and that's because the cover was cracked so I just took a spare airflow meter and plugged it in and the car did a little better but it still isn't the issue so what I've got here is another fuel pressure regulator and I'm going to try installing it just to see if that helps any so, Alright, I got the fuel pressure regulator off the rail now and I'm going to be replacing it with this one here. Alright guys, I got the fuel pressure regulator changed and it's running much better now. This sounds like it's got a very slight stumble, but as I mentioned, it's way better than it was. As you can see, the MPG gauge is no longer flickering around. Whenever it run before, this gauge was just bouncing all over the place. And it must have been due to the regulator. So anyway, what I'm going to do now is just tinker with it a bit and install that other airflow meter. So anyway, it's running really good. And right now I'm just going to let it run up the temperature. We're going to check to see if the fans work. Once that's done, we'll put that airflow meter on there and take it out on test drive. All right, I got the other airflow meter removed now and I'm gonna be attaching this one. And I'm gonna put some anaerobic sealer here on the bolts, just like the factory used. Make sure they don't come out. So, all right, now that I have the other airflow meter on, I'm gonna go ahead and install the filter and the cover, and then we'll dig into why these fans aren't working. All right, I got the engine fired up now, and it's idling beautifully. I'll go around here, and you can see the oil pressure looks good, and everything is working as it should. Now, the reason why I'm testing the thermo fan switch this way, rather than taking it out and testing it on a bench, is that it could be good, and I don't wanna waste all that time dumping the coolant out and things like that. So I'm just gonna let it idle a while and see if it switches on. All right, I've got it up to temperature now and you can see everything's where it should be. The MPG gauge is no longer wiggling all over the place as erratically as it was anyway. And it's doing about like it should. And down here, we have three and a half bar of oil pressure. So that's good. As I mentioned, I'm just gonna let it sit here and idle, and we'll see if the fans work. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and shut this down because the thermo fan switch should have already kicked on. So all right, I'm down here trying to figure out why the fans aren't working. I jumped the thermo fan switch and they still didn't come on, but I could hear the fan relay clicking. So I took the spare fans here 
and connected them and as you can see this car just has a set of bad fans so I'll be replacing them all right I've got the non-working fans out now and there's a set of good fans in the trunk and you can see how they had them wired up before I'm not sure exactly why they put a switch on these but it could be because the thermo fan switch isn't working so before I put these fans back in there I'm gonna verify that the thermo fan switch is working and once that's done then the fan should work properly and we can take this car out on a test drive all right I have the thermo fan switch wired up and if it's working the fan should kick on here at any moment So right, the thermo fan switch isn't working, so the fans aren't kicking on, and that's probably why they had the fans wired up to a switch to begin with. But I'm gonna let this cool down for a little bit, and then we'll get another thermo fan switch put in here, and hopefully get this working properly. All right, I've got a spare thermo fan switch that I'm gonna be checking here. So you can see I've got some boiling water, and when I sit it down in there, you should hear it click, and then I'll verify everything with the multimeter here. All right, so I tested it before I put it in the water and it was reading open and now it should read closed. And as you can see, it is working properly. So I'll go ahead and take it out and put it in the car. Sorry guys, I'm up underneath the car now and as you can see with the fans out, you have easy access to the thermo fan switch. So I've got the coolant dumped out now and next I'm just gonna go ahead and remove this and then put the new one in. All right, now that I've got a working thermo fan switch, I'm gonna make sure that the fans are working properly. So I started at the top installing these fans and I got the three screws in the top. And when I came down here to put the lower three screws in, I noticed that the shroud was too big for the radiator. And when I got over here, I noticed that these are the fans for 944 turbos so I've got to pull these out now and get the correct ones put in all right so these are the 951 fans that I took off the car the shroud is just too big although it uses the same fans that the later cars use with six blades and this specific plug here the earlier cars had only three blades as you can see here and this type of plug if you can see the difference there so this uses the same shroud as the later ones here. And you can see this is the late NA 944 shroud. It's the same part number as the early, but again, you have a six blade fan instead of three blades and that plug. So again, plug's different and there's only three blades. So I've got to figure out a way to make this all work. And it's probably going to require me using his original shroud here and these 951 fans. All right, so for good measure, I went ahead and brought out some more fans. This one here is off an 85.1, so it has the six bladed fan with the early plug. And I'm not sure exactly which years used the three bladed fan. It may have been only 83 and maybe some early 84s. But anyway, this car had three bladed fans. And this here is the fan off an early Euro car. And you can see it has a single six bladed fan since you don't need the condenser fan for the AC. Well, I didn't have any luck swapping everything over into the new shroud. So I just messed around and got these old fans working. So, all right, fans are in and everything's wired up. So everything should work properly now. Last night I got the fans reinstalled, so today we're going to get this car off the ramps and take it on test drive. Alright, we got the car off the ramps, and I drove it around the yard a little bit. I'm having to top up the automatic transmission fluid and make sure the coolant's bled. Right now I'm just letting it idle, and we're going to check and make sure that the fans are working properly, and then we'll take this out on test drive. See the fans are working. So I'll make sure it's 
holding temperature and as you can see it is oil pressure is good and so the next thing we need to do is just take this thing out on the road and see how it does all right i got this car off the ramps and i was able to drive it around the yard a little bit it drove pretty nice but i did have to top off the transmission fluid and i wanted to verify that the fans work before i took it out on the road now i'm getting ready to make sure that the headlights and the wipers work and this car should be done so before I take this car out on the road, I want to make sure that the wipers are working since it's been raining a lot lately. The stock is very stiff and it doesn't appear that the wipers are working. So I'll have to figure out what's going on there. I also need to see if the headlights are going to work. Okay, they were slow to pop up, but it does look like everything's working. Now let's see if they'll go down. All right, so they'll pop up, but they won't go back down. I'll have to figure out what's going on with that. Could just be a bad adjustment here. It's all right, the headlights did work, but they were very slow to go up. So I thought it was the adjustment here. And once I got it adjusted, I noticed that the motor hadn't cut off and was actually getting warm. And so I wound it back down and then nothing happened. So as you can see, as I'm spinning the motor, nothing's happening. So I think something's stripped down in here and I'll have to replace this motor. So all right, I got the headlights fixed and ended up needing a new motor. And I thought I would investigate now what's going on with the stock. As I mentioned, it's really crunchy. And when I took this lower portion off the steering wheel here, you can see it had a lot of broken corroded metal in it so i'm thinking that this stock is just completely shot so i'm gonna get the wheel off here and investigate what's going on all right so i have the steering wheel and the stocks off now and after looking at this it looks to be in pretty good shape i think i should be able to clean this up just fine now you can see that there's crud down in there and that's what was falling out at first i thought it was these traces here that were broken up and corroded and you just have to throw these in the trash when that happens but what this actually is is part of the plastic that's on this bearing here that has gotten broken to pieces and if you can see here when i jiggle this it's not very tight anymore so if i have time i'll try and replace this bearing or at least i'll put some grease in there and clean some of that crud out at the very least but anyway i'm thinking that everything's fine here and just maybe needs to be cleaned up so all right i was cleaning the contacts on this turn signal stock and i think i actually found the issue not only were the contacts very dirty but you can see how this is supposed to snap onto that well it's come completely off so i should be able to just snap this back on there and hopefully the wipers will work again all right last night i fixed the wipers and i also got the headlight motor working so as you can see it's working as it should now so the motor did lift the lights once but it was very slow and then after that they didn't do anything at all so i think something broke down inside this motor here so i ended up replacing it with this one here and everything's working as it should now once that was fixed i came in here and fixed the wiper stock i took everything apart and cleaned the contacts and greased it so it moves much smoother than it did before and as you can see the wipers are working so the auto return isn't working and if I switch it down here into intermittent mode nothing happens so I think that the intermittent relay is missing so I'll check a parts car and just see if I have a spare one but I have to do the wipers manually and I also have some new blades here so just in case we want to take this thing on a test drive we'll be able to see all right so this red car had a lot of missing and just broken relays and i kind of figured this one would be missing when the wipers didn't work properly so we'll try and put this spare relay in here and see if we have intermittent wipers now all right so i've got the relay installed now so i thought we'd try everything out you can see this is intermittent mode 
that's off and then we'll go to low speed and then a slightly faster speed and then I'll try and turn them off and see if they set themselves like they should and they do and as you can see the stock moves much smoother than it did before so anyway guys the last thing I need to do is just install these new wiper blades and this car will be done well guys it looks like I'm gonna be swapping this transmission out when I first started it up I didn't want to go into drive but I topped up the fluid and I was able to drive it around the yard a little bit but after not driving it for a few days it seems to have gone out completely all right, so we got this transmission pulled again, and it's a shame we didn't know that it was bad when we pulled it the first time, or I'd have swapped it out then. But anyway, hopefully the next one we put in will work. If not, I'm going to take this one to be rebuilt. I don't think that there's too much wrong with it. Reverse does work fine. It just doesn't want to go when you put it in drive. But it doesn't seem to have any leaks. You can see where some fluids run down here where we disconnected these hoses. But other than that, this trans looks to be in good shape. So it's a shame that we're not going to be using it. All right, so here's my spare automatic transmission. And as far as I know, this car did run and drive, but it's been sitting out a long time. So we'll just have to see how this goes. So all right, here's the transmission I'm going to be installing. It came out of an 87924S. And here's the transmission we just removed. So before I can get this one put on the jack, I need to remove these axles that someone has hacked off. Once that's done, I'll get it on the jack and we'll start installing it. All right, so I got the axles off, so me and James is gonna put it on the jack so we can install it. All right, well, I got the other transmission put in. And the good news is, is that the car now goes forward and drive. Unfortunately, we don't have reverse. So, I'm going to have to ask the owner what he wants to do here. So as you can see, when I put it in reverse here, very little if anything happens. Drive works normal. So I'm in reverse and I'm on some uneven ground now and as you can see the car doesn't move at all. So while on level ground it does go backwards and it gives you the illusion that there is some reverse actually having to push it now <laughs> just to get it to go backwards so once it's on level ground it will sort of go backwards but I mean even just the slightest incline and you get stuck so there's no reverse but there is dry so rather than having a transmission rebuilt that could take several months I've got to go to Georgia to pick up another transmission so I just thought I'd pick one up for this car as well all right guys i'm back down here in georgia to pick up those two transmissions and i just thought i'd walk around and see if he has any new cars that have arrived since the last time i was down here all right guys got both transmissions loaded up so i'm gonna head back now so it's about a three and a half hour drive each way to georgia to pick up parts and it's been a long rainy day it's about over with now i'm about an hour from the house all right, so I went down to Georgia and picked up another transmission. This one is out of a later car. So James is having to swap the mounts over. Let's see here, he's removing the late mount and then we've got this one started on this side. And then once we get the mount swapped over, it should go right in. This is the 924S transmission that I installed the other day. And this one didn't have reverse, so James has it out now. And we're gonna try and get this later transmission in and hopefully this car can go home. All right, James has the transmission in. He's just finishing it up. Then we're gonna make sure that this thing works. All right, guys, James got the transmission in and it's working excellent. We have drive and reverse all three speeds forward and it's doing excellent so far so all right guys i got to take this car out on a test drive the other night and the transmission is working perfectly so we're almost ready to let this car go home today i adjusted the hatch because it did pop open a few times while i was on that test drive i also noticed that 
The sun visor clips were broken, so I've gone ahead and replaced them now. And next I'm gonna go ahead and put the rear view mirror on, and I think that's it. So alright guys, I'm pretty much done with this car. As I mentioned the other night, I got the sun visor clips installed. And now I have the rear view mirror on. So let's go take it on the test drive. Alright guys, so this red 944 is getting ready to go home. And before it does, I thought I'd just give you a quick look at how well this car runs. It took a long time to get this thing sorted, but she fires right up. And just look at that oil pressure. So I'll pop the hood here. Alright guys, after a lot of work, this car is finally ready to go home. So here's a quick look back at some of the things we did. When this car first came in, I thought that it would just need belts and rollers and a few other things, but as soon as I got to digging into it, I found that there was coolant in the oil, so that meant pulling the oil pan and changing the rod bearings. I wasn't exactly sure what was causing the issue, so while I had the oil cooler out, I decided to do the head gasket as well. So once I got the head back on, I was able to reassemble the rest of the engine, only to find that the fuel system was packed with varnish. So I sent the injectors out to be cleaned and flow matched, and then I found that the fuel pump was not only clogged up, but the wiring was cut. To prevent the injectors and the new pump from clogging up, I decided to inspect the fuel tank, only to find it was completely packed with rust. After swapping in a new tank, I felt comfortable that the fuel system was completely clean, and I was ready to start it up. The first few attempts were unsuccessful. I found that the starter was bad. After replacing it, the car still wouldn't start, and I thought it was due to the aftermarket alarm, but it ended up being that the injectors were bad. After swapping in another set of injectors, I finally had the car running, but it was very short-lived since the fuel pressure regulator went out. After swapping in another regulator, the car was finally running properly, and I was able to diagnose why the fans weren't working. When the car first came in, I found that the fans were straight wired to a switch in the interior. Once I got all the wiring fixed, I found that there were several reasons why the fans weren't working, but I think the main culprit was the thermo fan switch in the radiator, but I also had to replace the relay under the dash. Once I had the fans working, I was ready to take it out on the test drive, but unfortunately, the transmission had completely gone out, so I ended up having to swap in another one, only to find that that one didn't have reverse. And so I ended up going down to Georgia and picking up another transmission before I could finally take the car out on its first test drive. So after a lot of work and three transmissions, this car is finally ready to Thanks, go home. <laughs> Alright guys, that's just about going to do it for this video. Before I go, I thought that I would share some pictures of Grant's beautiful 84 944 that he's been working on. And if you'd like to have pictures of your car featured in an upcoming video, just join our Facebook group. I'll leave a link in the description below and let me know you'd like to have them featured. Also, before I go, I want to give a quick thank you to Casey in Hawaii, who not only sent me this box of parts, but another box filled with t-shirts and hats, so thank you again. If you guys would like to stay up to date with some of the projects working around the shop, 
Be sure to join us on Facebook. I'll leave a link in the description below. Also, be sure to like and subscribe. And finally, I want to thank everyone who supports this channel on Patreon since these videos would not be possible without you. But anyway, guys, that's going to do it. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time.